Ambassador, uh, good morning. Um, thank you for accepting this, this interview. Um, my first question is about, um, naturally, the, the pandemic. In the latest week, you have been a digital diplomat. Can you tell me how are you living this situation being a digital ambassador? Yes. Very good morning, uh, dear Antonio. Thank you for your question and for this opportunity to speak to you and to your audience. It's uh, by itself, it's proving that we are living in different age of uh, different type of communications. Although the world was uh, hardly uh, heated, if not to say crushed by this uh, global, global challenge of Corona-19, uh, we are still surviving. There was this beautiful uh, in Brussels and in many other places. So uh, I appreciate this opportunity once again, talk to you and uh, speak on uh, contemporary opportunities versus challenges uh, associated with this phenomenon. Indeed, uh, thanks to the uh, human global development, especially advancement in technology area, we are still capable to communicate. This is uh, one of the basic needs for any human being. And uh, it has uh, initial negative impact when uh, we were starting to thinking how we will continue our work. And, uh, Indeed, uh, we are very active in that area, and I'm proud to say, for example, it's not only a uh, job of the ambassador or embassy of Uzbekistan in Brussels, but also our government is very, very uh, active in uh, communications with the outer partners, especially with the European Union. Uh, I may report that uh, our president talked at the beginning with the uh, uh, president of European Council, uh, uh, His Excellency Charles Michel, then we have a profound conversation between our Deputy Prime Minister in charge of economic affairs, uh, Mr. Sardor Murzakov, speaking to his counterpart, European Commissioner Phil Fogon. We had a conversation and uh, phone call and talks between the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Uzbekistan, uh, Kamilov, and the High Representative uh, Joseph Borrell. Uh, the list is very long. As uh, when it comes to my personal work, uh, we were continuing and uh, throughout almost two months uh, being on regular contacts with our partners in Europe as well, uh, I mean in European Union as well in the Belgium, Netherlands and Luxembourg. We were talking with the European Parliament members, we were talking to the uh, External Action Service, uh, to many other offices. So uh, it's kind of and my personal belief goes with that. Uh, it's kind of opportunity that also defines our future. And we expect that this practice will be continuing in nearest future, even we'll uh, overcome the corona itself. Mm -hmm. well, in, well, Uzbekistan has uh, 33 million inhabitants. It's the country in Central Asia with the most inhabitants. A lot of people are yes, uh, rural areas. So um, I wonder how difficult it was to explain to the population the risk that was out there with this pandemic. Was it challenging? Yeah. Well, um, you know, I don't know how to describe. I was uh, lucky enough uh, to be in uh, Uzbekistan itself when the pandemic came out and reached out to Uzbekistan. Um, the news came that uh, Uzbekistan is starting uh, lockdown operations and uh, taking stringent uh, sanitary measures when I was personally in Horizon. And of course, the immediate impact on level of our people was, uh, as in many other countries, similar. People were in certain level of uncertainty. But we are a nation of 34 million where we have uh, very strong in terms of efficiency uh, government system, uh, very reform-minded President Mirziyoyev. And uh, from outset of these events, he proclaimed that the life of every person has a profound uh, value which should overcome any other uh, economic or uh, any type of other justification. So out, up to the date, we have infected about 3,778 people. 
is uh, of uh, recent news that I read uh, throughout our media. It's a very transparent uh, management system when every day we have reporting from the special commission, Republican commission, on those uh, people who are being infected. We have uh, about 13, one, three uh, people that passed away. Uh, this is very unfortunate. Of course, because every life is lost, it's huge tragedy for the uh, family, for the uh, close people, but also for the communities. Still, the economic cost is high, especially when we are speaking about certain types of the industry in uh, Uzbekistan, it's Horeca, of course, it's uh, also tourism industry in general, many other activities. But uh, we also, our government was very innovative in uh, facing those challenges. For example, we were among few other countries in the world where we uh, implemented so-called uh, smart lockdown. Uh, we have a system of three colored regions. For example, if the region is absolutely free of any corona infection, so people are free to uh, execute their daily lives without any type of restriction. Go to the families, visit their working places, so so forth. If there is some infection, no deaths, no major outbreak, then it's yellow uh, uh, blended areas where people are asked to keep the precautionary measures. Still for Uzbekistan in general, it's uh, advised by the government for the people to wear the mask. In many countries of the Europe, it's, of course, it's different. But in case of Uzbekistan, these early measures are also put this level of uh, disease to very low uh, level. And uh, our general observation- a smart um, lockdown that you're explaining us, um, if you, as you know, if you compare with the European situation at the beginning, there was some resistance from the citizens to comply with the government decisions. And in some countries, it was indeed dramatic than the result. Uh, do you think that uh, your um, citizens, they immediately understood the need of wearing masks of respect? Of course not. Regulation? No. Of course not. Uh, as I said, as, uh, uh, at the outset of the disease and until even now, uh, we have the cases when people just misunderstand the simple regulations. From the beginning, it was told that people must wear the gloves and the masks. And many people reacted differently due to different, not only cultural norms, but also to, due to the misunderstanding of the cowardice of this disease. You know, it's cannot be easily identified and many people who were even infected, they were not kind of feeling any symptoms that they infected, but they still were uh, transmitting this uh, disease to other people who were reacting in very bad way. And uh, at the beginning we have uh, cases when, for, for example, I, I'm not going to name the, uh, the person or the region, for example, one person, uh, she came from major overseas uh, pilgrimage and she celebrated at her home the uh, coming back and she invited the people. So unfortunately this uh, older lady, she passed away, but she also infected many people of her family and neighborhood. And you can imagine in the uh, country like Uzbekistan with very close knit uh, roots and uh, relations, she was uh, mm, put to the rest without the participation of family members. Such cases, they, of course, have uh, had a profound effect on the overall community in Uzbekistan because uh, we had uh, no choice but announced that not observing simple regulations could bring the people to very similar situation. Or we had uh, a case when the doctor was infected himself. He did not properly report. Uh, Although he was dealing with the, uh, many um, uh, people, so he infected others. Mm -hmm. And uh, our government uh, has no, uh, had a no choice but uh, react smoothly on that. Uh, we implemented the cases of putting the uh, uh, fines on the people, 
and in some cases even asking uh, the questions on such a behavior. But it taken, I believe, maybe 10 days for the nation to understand, and that was also done because our government was very much transparent and explicit in uh, giving the uh, full-fledged information that we were receiving from our partners. We had the cases where seen how it was involving in Eastern countries, in European countries, in some other countries overseas. So, I mean, I, I'm not to name the bad examples, but we learned our lessons and uh, we, in my deep belief, we, we done a good uh, part of job jo to keep our people safe. That's an important uh, point, to learn from the others and learn from exactly. mistakes. Because um, that's that happened even within Europe, uh, with some countries that have a delay. Uh, now, just recently, Montenegro was declared as the first country free of Corona, precisely because they had time to take su such measures. Now, I, I'm wondering about um, your neighbors. Your borders are closed, firmly closed. Um, the figures in Central Asia are low, but when we reach to the big neighbor, uh, Russia, uh, it's uh, quite scary, uh, the figures that we, we have there. Um, how are the relationships now uh, between the two countries and the, do the national authorities of Uzbekistan are afraid of um, a Russian contamination? Well, uh, Russia is not only our big neighbor, but uh, is basically a lie in terms of uh, political and economic cooperation and uh, major trade partner of Uzbekistan among uh, three biggest tra uh, trading uh, nations uh, in our uh, foreign uh, trade. And uh, when it comes to the corona issue, apart from being contaminated uh, for the local population, we also need to say that uh, there are about 1.5 million Uzbek citizens who are on more or less regular basis are visiting Russia, working migrants, uh, we have very close human-to-human uh, -human ties, and uh, until now we had a number of our people waiting their return from Russia uh, uh, back to the home country. And uh, from the beginning, I, I will always uh, repeat myself, saying from the outset or from the beginning, because what was done uh, to the best of uh, Uzbek government job, it was huge analytical work to assess what are the potential risks, what are the countries from where we can bring this disease back into Uzbekistan. And uh, due to this number of our workers and uh, migrants in Russia, visiting uh, people uh, to Russia, students, we made a good assessment that we will need to bring those uh, people back. And uh, under the leadership of uh, President uh, Mirziyoyev, uh, our government built up throughout the country a number of uh, emergency units and medical facilities for big quantities of the people who will be brought back. And when we started evacuating our own citizens, uh, that was uh, very uh, strictly observed, that any person who are coming from abroad, he will be automatically put into a two-week quarantine to observe his uh, status of health and uh, identify any potential risk for him or for his family members. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, at some point, major number of infected people among those 3,778 people that I presented today were people who are coming from major destinations like uh, Russia and uh, Kazakhstan, also China, Korea, Middle East. Recently, we resumed evacuation measures and uh, there are a lot of work still to be done in that respect. Fortunately, Uzbekistan does not uh, has a shortage on medical uh, relief staff, uh, emergency units, and uh, even more, uh, you asked me about the questions of the region and neighbors. We were among first countries in the world which were starting supply operations to our partners. That includes even the European Union member states like uh, 
Hungary, for example. At the very beginning, we sent a special airplane on the orders and instructions of our president with uh, relief supplies, medical stuff. We had uh, submitted the uh, same uh, assistance uh, to China, Russia, Belarus, Kyrgyzstan, Azerbaijan, Afghanistan, many, many other countries in the world. And uh, it was on mutual basis. It's not only uh, lending the helping land, but also uh, common fight and again the common challenge, if not to say the enemy. This this pandemic is really testing us, and it really brought the world to a standstill. And it's true that um, among the different sectors of our economies that are affected, there is one that is deeply affected, which is uh, the tourism, the tourism industry. Now, Uzbekistan has been conducting uh, such a policy of promoting the country in the last decade, promoting the emblematic cities of Samarkand, Bukhara, Kiva, attracting more and more tourists from the Western world. When we reach now a moment where it's extremely difficult to travel and we need indeed to reconsider to rethink how we will travel tomorrow. That said, um, what are the supports being delivered by the state to the tourism industry? And the second question I have is regarding your opinion on how we will travel tomorrow. Do you think we, are, we will assist uh, to a change in terms of um, sustainable travel, people that will pay more attention to their footprint, they will consider before traveling what to eat on the spot and how to behave. Uh, also in terms of health, uh, to, to perhaps pay attention to things that we were not paying attention before. So what's your opinion? Well, uh, you're absolutely right in terms of assessing overall situation with uh, tourism industry development in Uzbekistan for last years. We started this uh, work a decade ago, but uh, actual changes and major breakthrough came throughout the last few years. And uh, indeed, uh, tourism became a phenomenon of economic uh, development and drive uh, in Uzbekistan. You mentioned a few cities, but let me give you one example. For example, Harazm region, which is one on the out post for the deserted areas of huge Eurasian steppes and desert areas in Uzbekistan, very famously known as the uh, last stop before the long leap to more green oasis and of Eurasia, was heated hardly by this uh, corona because everything is, was shut down. Even the internal travel and internal tourism industry was on uh, Hold and uh, yes, government made the assessment on how we can help the people because so many families, uh, small and medium enterprises involved into the tourism industry were uh, hit uh, by this uh, epidemic. And uh, one of the few measures I, I can mention those. Uh, Hotels and uh, small, medium, big enterprises who were uh, affected by this were prolonged and offered by special credits and loans from the government. If they had already uh, uh, taken the credits uh, or some other money that they needed to return, they were uh, automatically uh, prolonged and uh, government asked the banks and other financial institutions not to put additional burden, but to help with some uh, financial relief. And uh, also government is uh, promoting heavily uh, reopening the routes. As of uh, yesterday, uh, government of Uzbekistan asked uh, the internal tourists to travel back, especially for those areas and regions, which is majority of Uzbekistan, where the green zone status is uh, proclaimed and people can freely travel from uh, one region to another region, so again, Samarkand, Bukhara, Kiva, many other smaller places which are famous for internal tourists. And um, also uh, we expect that uh, sooner or later 
and we have already started this preparatory work, international tourism flow will be resuming. Our government was talking also to the major uh, overseas partners. For example, we are learning the experience of uh, Turkish Republic, where the government of Turkey said that they are preparing safe tourism options for external uh, tourism operations. Talking we also about that, when are you going to open the borders and accept tourists? Uh, we are, uh, now the discussions underway. Yesterday we had a big video conference call between the Deputy Prime Minister in charge of tourism industry, Aziz Abdul Hakimov, and the Secretary General of uh, World uh, Tourism Organization. We are now discussing with uh, many countries of touristic nature, like Greece, some other countries who are uh, trying to revive the tourism industry, how we can start our tourism industry from, from the beginning and to make it at first place very safe. I believe that one of the th things that is our government doing is to assess what are the major tourism inflow countries that do not uh, present the risk of uh, having second wave of corona pandemic. Second issue that we are discussing now is how to arrange this concept of travel in the new environment. And it's the whole, I would not say supply chain, but it's the whole chain of different steps where we need to be very cautious. We need to understand that people who are coming to our country are healthy. Means of transportation, how this means of transport, transportation are arranged what are the requirements when the people are landed in different destinations in Uzbekistan? Where are going they to uh, visit? What to visit? How to provide the best options for the safety, safety medical safety in the first place? Mm -hmm. And uh, how we should organize the uh, size and sleeping, eating places. So this is the complexity of, uh, of the issue. And I believe uh, in a couple of weeks we'll come up with some uh, completed ideas how and what we are going to do. But I want also to thank you, uh, Antonio, with your very concept of uh, travel tomorrow, because it's basically the definition of what not only our government, government of Uzbekistan is doing, but this is the concept of uh, the whole uh, world today, because everybody is missed normal uh, human to human uh, conversation face to face talks and especially for uh, tourists for the summer period when everybody is set to renew their normal life we need to provide as the public officers and servants uh, some options to uh, uh, respond to the demand from our people thank you for your concept Thank you very much, Ambassador, and for your uh, lovely uh, contribution from Central Asia. That gives us a little bit of hope that uh, hopefully in the future we can uh, reestablish again the human contact and discover the pearls of uh, Uzbekistan. Thank you very yes. much. Thank you indeed, and I would like to welcome all uh, your audience with uh, traditional Uzbek saying, Kushkelepsis. So welcome to Uzbekistan. Thanks so much. I appreciate your conversation. Rahmat. Rahmat. <laughs>